Got Stormy hits the front. Bratata's finishing fast with Ferdinanda, but Got Stormy kicks away. Got Stormy kicks it in another gear, opens up two and a half. Late run from Punked on the inside, and then Bratata hits Got Stormy to win it. Well, that was a win in the wild applause from Got Stormy back on June the 23rd for trainer Mark Cassie, who's winning all over the planet at, uh, right now. He's got a very busy weekend coming up. Mother Goose, Queen's Plate we'll talk about. Mark, thanks for joining us. We want to start, though, with that victory we just saw right now with Got Stormy in the wild applause. Back-to-back -back wins now. What's next for her? We're, um, we're looking at a couple possibilities. One, maybe the Lake George. Um, she may go to Toronto. There's a, I can think of the name of it right now, grade three there, or possibly Del Mar. So, uh, yeah, there's, we have like three races that we're contemplating on. She's really gotten good, Mark. I guess the question with her is how far does she want to go, and do you want to try two turns at Saratoga or Del Mar? That is the question. Um, you know, we've kind of felt like a mile. She has one going two turns. She won the race at Penn National. So I'm not so worried about the two turns. It's just, you know, after a mile, I don't know if she can be as effective. And, and the Lake George is a mile on the 16th. Got the Mother Goose coming up this weekend. And a lightly raced filly for you, Road to Victory. She owns a pretty interesting distinction. Uh, she beat Monomoy Girl, the only one to have done so in her only start on dirt. Tell us about that that performance back in her two-year-old campaign, and what did you expect out of her in her first try on dirt and just the second start of her career back then? Well, she had trained exceptionally well. She trained, she kind of trains well on everything, um, but we sent her after her victory at Woodbine. We sent her down, trained her for a while at Churchill Downs, and she trained exceptionally well. Obviously, we didn't know what we were running into when we ran into Monomoy Girl. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, it was quite a battle, and um, she prevailed in just the last couple jumps. Mark, I'm curious what your thinking was in general, because you, you ran her into turf in her first start, and then she won the dirt. You decided to use turf in a turf sprint as her prep for her first start as a three-year-old. Well, I'll tell you what happened. Um, she she had a minor injury when, after she won the Golden Rod, and um, so I started getting her ready. And of course, we wanted to get her ready for the Oaks. And then when it became apparent that wasn't going to happen, then I started thinking about trying to get ready for the Acorn. And I could see that the Acorn was going to come up extremely tough. So I said, "Well, let's change directions. Let's aim for the Mother Goose." And what is the best way for me to get to the mother goose, you know, where I could get a prep into her, wouldn't have to train her for her to be 100%. And she'd already had uh, success on the Woodbine turf course, which we know can sometimes be difficult. But um, so I thought, well, there you go, straight three-year-old fillies. I can have her about 80%, and she should, uh, she should be able to still get the job done. Um, I didn't realize, you know, she had kind of a rough trip she, from the inside. And uh, at the top of the lane, I was very concerned she was even going to get there because I knew she was going to be a little, you know, a little short. So, um, but I planned this three months ago. Trying, I said, well, so when we knew we were going to make the acorn or maybe two and a half months ago, I said, let's make it to the mother goose. And, and, and so here we are. And what about Geo Game, Mark? A horse that's really has not run a, a, a bad race. She's been very, very consistent. And you talk about Monomoy Girl. She wasn't that far behind her last time. No, you know, um, there's a filly. We've always obviously thought a lot of her, Paul. We sent her, uh, we've sent her the Breeders' Cup, and that, you know, everybody knows that was a funny racetrack. And she just didn't run a lick that day. We brought her home, kind of regrouped, and. Um, She's come back, and you know what? Every race seems to be a little stronger. Um, I thought her race in the Acorn was good. Um, but more importantly, she came back and trained really well. Um, more than likely, though, um, I entered both fillies. Um, both fillies, one is owned by Mr. Oxley, and, he, and then he owns half of Road to Victory. And, and uh, we really don't want to run the two fillies together. So I thought, well, we'll enter them both. More likely, it's going to be Road to Victory that's going to run on Saturday. And then uh, whoever I don't run will go to the Delaware Oaks the following week. Um, right now, 
I would say that would be GeoGame. Well, you got the Mother Goose this weekend. You also have a race. We're going to show both of these on our air this uh, weekend as well. The Queen's Plate, the first leg of the Canadian Triple Crown. And telekinesis, part of a trio of horses where it looks like you have a pretty strong hand. Yeah, How do you feel about telekinesis, a son of Ghost Zapper, who's had pretty good success in this race, too, the last three winners of the Queen's Plate, yeah. offspring of Ghost Zapper? Yeah, Ghost Zapper's had tremendous success over the Tapita and the Queen's Plate. Um, you know, this is, a, this is an extremely talented horse. Um, unfortunately, you know, we're a li he's a little late getting on the scene. Uh, didn't get started till uh, early uh, early spring, I guess, or early winter. Um, you know, he's ran well. I thought his last race was good. I think he was a little confused. I, I think at the half mile pole, he thought the race was over, and it looked like he may get beaten. All once he kind of figured it out, took off again. Um, you know, he looks he looks good. It's a, a question of the mile and a quarter. Um, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, I know Wonder Gadot's going to love the mile and a quarter, and uh, I think my other horse could be a little bit of a sleeper, uh, Nepawa. I know, I, you know, he's by Scat Daddy, and um, a mile and a quarter is definitely going to be to his liking as well. You know, Mark, I was going to hit on Wonder Gadot, and, and I was going to ask you, I mean, what kind of filly has she been, a three-year-old filly in your barn? She's got to be, she's like an ATM machine. She has danced every dance. She ran a great uh, second in the Kentucky Oaks, and then, boom, she runs a great race in the Woodbine Oaks. Are you worried a little bit that she's had a lot on her plate and telekinesis has been a bit, a little bit more lightly raced? Do you think she can handle this? You know what, Paul? She thrives on it. She does. Um, she's truly Wonder Woman. Um, you know us. We I like running them. If 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 they're doing well, I will run them. Um, I go back 25, 30 years ago where uh, I got to spend some time with Alan Jerkins, and he said, would always tell me, he said, I don't understand horse trainers. They always want to give them a rest when they're running good. Rest them when they run bad. <laughs> and um, so I kind of go by that theory. And um, she continues to thrive and, and do well. She's a big, robust filly. She. She probably will be the biggest horse in the race, Philly or Colt. It's interesting, Mark. You brought up uh, Nipawa and said that uh, he could be sort of a dark horse of the three. He feels like a horse that last time was compromised by a race that was one on the front end, and he may really like the mile and a quarter. Yeah, there was lack, lack of pace, and there's going to be plenty of pace in the, in the Queen's Plate. Um, going to be plenty of pace. More importantly, you know what? It's... This is similar to the Kentucky Derby. A lot of times it's not what you did three months ago. It's how you're training right now. Now, obviously, you have to have, have the ability, but it's the horse. It's the now horse. And you know what? Nippawa right now is the now horse. He's training as good as any of the, the three of our horses. And I just think he's been an underachiever, and I keep waiting for him one day to – to break out, and um, it wouldn't shock me if it happened on uh, Saturday. I, I told Florent when we gave him the mount, I said, I want you to come ride this horse, and I said, don't be shocked if you win the Queen's Plate. You know, my last question to you will be, Mark, is telekinesis. Is he still trying to figure things out? That June 1st work at Woodbine over the synthetic is too good to be true. When he came off the racetrack that day, did you get any calls that, wow, this horse could be your plate trial winner and has a shot to be the Queen's Plate winner? You know, I'm not trying to pat myself on the, the back here, but um, <laughs> this horse has been pretty special from uh, from the time we got him. I, I can remember telling Barbara, you know, last year, I said, you're going to win the Queen's Plate. I said, we have the Queen's Plate winner. So, I mean, he is always, we, you know, we have a fair amount of good young horses, and at one time, um, you know, I, I don't know if you know, but my one of my main assistants, David Carroll, has been around for a long time, just a great horseman. You know, he just kept raving about this horse, and, and um, we always thought he was top of the class. So uh, it's not a real surprise. It's just been, you know, a bit of, an, uh, been a, bit of a challenge. He didn't help himself. We had him ready to run in about January, and he went over the pad. I got upset, and he reared up and slipped over, and he didn't hurt himself, but he's an automatic scratch. 
and then we had to wait another month, you know, to get a race into him. So that kind of set me back. If not, you know, he could have been possibly a derby contender type horse. If you look at his numbers uh, early on on the dirt, his numbers are good as pretty well any three-year-old in North America. Now, that is a pretty terrific trio of runners you have going in that first leg of the Canadian Triple Crown. And with Wonder Godot, obviously, that's a nice team. You teamed up to win with Gary Barber with another filly, Lexi Liu, back uh, in 2014. It would be the eventual Canadian Horse of the Year. We wish you all the best of luck in that race coming up this weekend. We're certainly going to be keeping our eyes on both of those, having both those races on our show. We want to ask you, too, before we let you go, this game is so tough, so many terrific trainers out there, and now you have some new competition with your son, Norm, part of the mix as well. We saw him win with a first-time starter here at Belmont. How's that been to see him have some success now? Well, you know what? That's uh, Norman going and being successful would would be my greatest accomplishment, I guess. Um, he's already laid it to me once. Uh, we we he beat he beat us. Well, we didn't hit the board. He won with the first-time starter at Churchill uh, last week too. So. You know what? It's not a matter if Norman's going to be successful. He is. You know, it's and uh, I just got to try to you know hang on as long as I can. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're a proud father, uh, Norm. Uh, excuse me, I'm calling you Norm Mark, uh, and then we'll let you go. Let's talk about world approval. He's been such a st uh, stalwart in your barn. Has not run well the last couple times. What's his status right now? Because I think a lot of his fans, his own fans, because he created his own fans, want to know. Yeah, you know what, Paul? He's been a little frustrating. I mean, frustrating, yes, and I guess no. He's done so much for us. You know, you got to remember we, when we got him, he was a maiden and started a couple times and hit the board. So he's done so much for us, and we know him so well. We just don't know. I, I don't know what to make of him. I, I he. He trains good. I thought, you know, he's got the same team. He has the same exercise rider he's had for years, and he says he's better than ever. I mean, he just seems that way, but he hasn't really uh, shown it this year. I Even when you look back at his first race, you know, where he won at Tampa when we were contemplating on going to Dubai, I, I just wasn't satisfied with that race. And, in fact, the horse that he barely beat of Bill Motts has come back and not done anything. So, I don't have a good answer for you. I, I can tell you that right now he's happy. He's sound. We're going to take him to Saratoga um, and, and see. You know, I said to Johnny after his last race, I said, you know, maybe it's time to look for you know, lesser goals or maybe think about even retirement. And he said, oh, no, no, no. He insisted. He said he did not handle the track at all that night. Now, you know, I, I don't want to keep making excuses for him. So, uh, but we're going to take him to Saratoga. We're going to train him. We're going to aim for the four-star Dave. If um, if he trains well and he, and we feel that he's got a shot, we'll run him. If not, uh, you know, we're just going to have to see how it plays out. But he doesn't owe us anything. And um, if, if uh, whatever whatever we decide, um, Mrs. Weber is she's a true horse woman and. Um, she always wants to do what's best for the horse. So he may, you know, ultimately he's going to spend his uh, days uh, in the grass at Live Oak and Ocala. All right, well, Mark, we appreciate it. Charlotte Weber, of course, Live Oak Plantation owns World Approval. And we saw that in the four-star day of last year. What a run that began for the horse who would go on to win the Breeders' Cup Mile. Mark Cassie, thank you so much for coming on. Best of luck this weekend in both the Mother Goose and the Queen's Play. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Bye, guys. Thanks, Mark.